hello and welcome back everyone to the twin stick shooter tutorial series um, for today we're going to be talking about AI it's a fairly meaty AI system but it's super easy to use and I've streamlined it pretty well and hopefully you find it just as easy as I do to use uh, I wrote up a quick graph the enemy AI is a direct child of the twin stick character as well as our players as a direct child so this is just the other side of the coin truly um, for this example, we're just going to click on any of these characters, or if you want, you could go to enemy characters. Actually, let's go back to the content folder. Content, twin stick shooter, enemy characters, AI. We have four preset AIs right here, as well as um, a uh, player parent or a enemy AI parent. So I guess truly the hierarchy would be enemy AI, and then the four, one, two, three, four little boxes of each of the individual AIs and you could go ahead and you could make as many of them as you want if the ones I have aren't up to your favor you could just go ahead and create a child blueprint class and then you could go ahead and customize them all the same as this if we were to click on any of these we should be able to see its parameter sets and uh, just like the player um, it's fairly straightforward if this will load please and thank you awesome all right it's loading all right, so this is the AI Dodger. And for the AI, we have the uh, skeletal mesh, of course, the animations, all the same stuff as the player um, with all the uh, player stuff. We have like uh, the weapon stances, all that good stuff. Um, we're only gonna be worrying about, I'll pull it out off here. This is easier to just visualize. Right here on the right, this is what's important. Customize, personalize, dodge system. You saw in the previous tutorial we had the dodge system for the uh, player the AI inherits it so it also has the exact same system you could choose to uh, change the dodge animations as you wish or modify them you have a primary and secondary spawn weapon so what the enemy AI spawns with um, with both weapons you have the dodge stamina cost of course the dodge distance the look and turn rate we have the dodge chance this is a weighted boolean so uh, 0 0.25 is one fourth as a fraction, meaning that there's a one fourth chance that the enemy will dodge while uh, they're attacking you and strafing at you. Um, this is specific to the AI strafer. If you set this to one, then they're always gonna dodge, or at least try to, unless they're out of stamina, they won't dodge. If you set this to zero, they'll never dodge. I think 0 0.25 is totally fair. One fourth, uh, change that as you will. Right here we have the AI controller class. This is where you choose what type of AI controller you want. Right now I have the uh, strafe attacker on. So the strafe attacker, let me explain these all, is um, an enemy AI that uh, finds a good distance between itself and the player, about like a thousand uh, unreal units or so. And it will circle the player and it will attack the player. It will reload when needed, of course, and it will strafe. So it will run side to side, it will hit dodge attacks, it's very aggressive, uh, pretty cool AI. Uh, we also have the AI Suicide Bomber, I'll let you take a random guess what that does, but it, well, it does exactly what it does. It rushes right up to the player, it will hit an animation, and it will blow itself up. We have the Tactical Advancer, these AI are more cautious of their own life. So what they do is they use a EQS system, which stands for Environmental Query System. Um, which will uh, find objects on the ground that the player can't see behind and they'll take cover behind it and then they'll pop out and they'll take shots and then they'll hide behind cover they'll check if they need to reload then they'll reload if needed um, pretty cool uh, system all in all and then we have the AI rushes player now the AI rushes player similar to the suicide bomber will run up point blank distance and then it will start to attack I think this is very good for um, uh, like a zombie like enemy AI to be honest like if you were to make it run up and hit you or a melee type of any sort um, Rush's player is perfectly fine for that but it also is of course compatible with guns you can run up and just point blank shoot you with a shotgun uh, that's you know if you give it that then it will do that of course um, so we also have this little boolean can roam I have it ticked off for this character so when I start the game, this character will just stand still. He will guard this post 
and he will wait till he hears you or sees you and then he'll go and attack you. Um, if I set it to roam, he will find a random point in the map and he'll just start going to it and when he reaches it, let's say it's like right here, he'll find another point, he'll go there, and then he'll go here, and then he'll go there, and then he'll go there, and so on and so forth. It's just, you know, a complete free roam. Um, so if he can walk to it, you'll get there eventually. Um, if you don't like that, of course, you know, just turn it off. They could stand guard. But what if you want them to move, but you don't want them to move free roam? You want them to move on a controlled path. Well, we have that as well in the components. Um, we have the AI path patrol where we have path uh, nodes. And if I go to AI objects, this is where it is. You could create path nodes. So let's say I put a node. And let me spin it around so that the red arrow faces the direction I want. I want them to still face the same direction. And then I want them to walk over here. And I want them to take a look at this wall. And then I want him to uh, walk one more time and stand guard right here. So I got three nodes. And I could click on this AI. And I could go right down to the patrol path. And it's a map. And we could just go ahead and we could select and... You could either manually select or you could use the eyedropper. I like the eyedropper, so I'm going to do that. Um, you could see that the eyedropper only accepts things that are a path node. So you can't misclick and accidentally assign it to the ground or to the explosive barrel or any of that, just to the nodes. And then right here is uh, how long you want them to wait. I'm going to give him uh, one second, one second, and two second. And then the uh, path type looped or ping pong are the options I give you. If it's looped, the AI will uh, walk the circle directly. So he'll go path one, two, three, and back to one. So you'll find his way out there. He'll probably circle around this way. And then ping pong is if the path goes one, two, three, three, two, one. So in the case that you don't want them bouncing back and forth. Alrighty. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and show this in action. If I were to go ahead, hit run play, and I'll hit F8 so we can break the camera. And you can see our enemy is walking to that point. And then he'll walk to this point. He'll turn around. The other one's an exploder AI, and yet he's just gonna lock onto us. But that's totally fine. But you, you get the gist. He walked one point, two point, three point. And at three point, he walked kind of around unorganized. He went straight to point one again. And again, if that's something you don't want and you want him to walk one, two, three, three, two, one, then all you do is simply set it to ping pong. If we run that again, they'll go point one, point two, and then when he turns around, he's going to go right back to point two. Yep, point two. And I'm point three, and you'll probably see us here. Yeah, there he is. He's he doesn't like us, of course, because he's an enemy. And um, that is it for the uh, path tracing stuff, the uh, path nodes. Also, um, the uh, components. I should cover that. We have uh, multiple different components. They are exactly the same as the player components. They're all inherited. So we have an energy bar. We could choose how much stamina we give it how often uh, or how uh, much we regain on the regain rate and what is the delay between it. So for the enemies that dodge, you know, that's something that you uh, will keep in mind. Um, we'll have the uh, health component, how much health we give it. Unlike the player, I remember I told you guys I gave the player 300 health. The enemy AIs get 100 health. Uh, you could just play with that as much as you want. And then we have the self-destruct uh, component which is unique to just the um, AI. And what that is, is uh, we could toggle it whether it wants a self-destruct or not, and we could also give it a detonation animation and an explosion force. So this is how much it's gonna repel us when it explodes, um, if it can explode, and what is the detonation animation for it. So the detonation animation is um, the animation montage that the player or enemy AI will hit right before they detonate themselves. Um, I'd like to think of this as like, let's say we have the suicide bomb character, they could reach for a detonator, give like a visual cue they're about to blow up, or maybe this is like a, 
the grunts from Halo type of idea. They're just holding the grenades up in the air and then they do a scream. Or it could be like some bloated zombie thing where it does like a like a yell before it does what it does. You know, whatever. A visual cue for the player basically to allow them to know, hey, I'm going to need to dodge this real quick or take the hit. Um, if you do not provide an animation, if you just clear it, that is totally fine. It will just detonate instantly. It will skip that part. If you do give it an animation, it will do the animation, then it will detonate. That is totally fine. Um, and of course, uh, while can self-destruct should be toggled on for the um, characters that are suicide bombers, so if we were to go back to AI controller and do suicide bomber, it will be um, ticked on. What you should keep in mind is that it doesn't have to be a suicide bomber to self-destruct. You could give it the strafe character and on death just let them blow up. So maybe you just have normal zombies and you just want them to rush the player. Um, but they're volatile as mentioned before as like an idea. So you would do perhaps um, the um, rush this player and they just attack and hit you. But upon death they do blow up then you would just go ahead and toggle uh, can self-destruct is on. One thing that was missing for a moment but I just went ahead and fixed is um, on the self-destruct we're supposed to have a lot more components so yes we have the explosion force we have the animation for the detonation you should also be able to control the base amount of damage the explosion does maybe this self-destruction is massive guy has like a nuke tied to himself basically and you want to crank this number all the way up to like 10,000 that's fine if not you know 75 I think is a totally fine amount it's enough to hurt the character greatly but not usually kill them unless they're already hurt you control the inner radius the outer radius the damage fall off the explosion sound the attenuation the sound range how long sound range is uh, how far away can the explosion happen for an enemy to also hear it so let's say a detonator explodes and then the next room the enemies hear it and they could go into that room and investigate it um, we have the explosion of course which is a visual effect and we have the explosion scale I have it at two times set you could set to whatever you want of course you might have your own custom Niagara effect not just the P underscore explosion that I provide um, which is you know totally fine that's up to you and that does it for the AI um, Again, they are just like the players, so you could do whatever you want over here. You could give them whatever weapons you want. You could make another weapon following the weapons tutorial. Make your own custom weapon. Make your own boss weapon. Give it something super unique, and then give it just this one AI, and all of a sudden, uh, he's a special type of character that you'd want to kill for that weapon. Um, and, and there it is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you need any additional help, uh, we have a Discord server. It is found in the uh, link in the description. And if you have any additional questions, you could just shoot them there and I'll try to get to you. Thank you for watching.